All right, so we've talked about the right stuff in your business and the concept that here are some places, here are some places where you can get benefit from creating some stuff, right? Creating the handbook, creating the magazine, creating the book, whatever it is, creating the bait, right, that you can go put out there. In the, and let me clarify bait. Um, bait typically is thought of as something that you put out into the world to catch prey, right? Well, you know, that can have a negative connotation. It can feel bad as a business person to think, oh, what, what bait? I'm putting bait out there. And as I've said, when I talk about the alchemy of big and how if you get your head straight with big thinking and business is good thinking, then you won't be held back by things like that because, not because you cease to care about people or your customers, your clients, which obviously is the most important um, perspective and principle in your business is that you want what's best for your clients, uh, per current, prospective, future, past. But um, if you get your head right and start thinking big, then all of those things like bait and sales techniques and follow-up and all of that stuff, right, multiple step follow-up, um, even techniques when you're talking to somebody to get somebody to take action, all of those um, techniques that right now feel ugh, a little sleazy, a little mercenary, a little greedy to you are completely transmuted, transformed. That's why we call it alchemy, right? Because it goes something base into something gold and precious. But bait, remember two things. One is that it's only, bait is only bad if your plan is to kill and eat your customers, okay? If you're using bait to bring in um, somebody to rescue them, somebody to help them uh, experience greater wellness, if you're using bait to help somebody uh, come into your network so that you can help them learn how to improve their lives or solve their problem, I would submit to you that bait is a good thing. You're out there searching for people. You're prospecting for people to help. But if you want to think about it in a little bit different way, and this is how I think about it, is think about bait as... Big advice, information, and tools, okay? Your job is to go out there and put big advice, information, tools that would be helpful to everybody, regardless whether you ever talk to them, regardless whether they ever walk through your door, regardless whether they're even potential uh, clients. You teach you share, you give your bait out into the world, and yes, the people who are right prospects will take that bait and walk into your intake and conversion process, or sometimes I like to think about it, your intake and empowerment process. These are the people that you're going to educate, empower, inspire to make the right decision in their lives. So let's, without further ado, how do we do that? So you already have this list, this list of stuff you already have. But let's go through and see what would be right for you. Um, I'm going to star a few of the ones that I think are typically uh, immediately resonate with people. One, I think people, especially in the social media world, they, they realize, oh, I need to put some content out there, right? This is the article. This is the tips. This is the advice that you put out on, uh, you publish on a blog, you publish on somebody else's blog, you post to social media, and the goal of this is to get them, is to build your credibility and to get it back to you, right? So you put your signature, you put your contact information, you even put another piece of bait in there, right? Go to my website for my diagnostic to see whether uh, your books are squared away right now. This is a 23-point checklist that will immediately tell you whether you are on the verge of uh, uh, filing for bankruptcy in your business or whether you should start uh, fitting yourself for the, the McMansion or what have you. So those are the types of things that if somebody sees out in the world, they might think they, they, that it's appealing to them. Hey, that looks like an item of value. I'm willing to go to the person's website. I might even be willing to give my information in order to have access to that content. Two things about that. One is, it's got to be easier than calling you, 
Okay, it's got to be less of a commitment than come call me for your free consultation because we don't want to make the commitment to something before we've tasted it, right? We don't want to pay for the meal until we've eaten it. I use this analogy of the difference between a, a restaurant and a buffet. In a buffet, you pay for the meal, you've picked out the things you want, and then you go eat them. In a restaurant, you order the stuff that you want, you eat it, and then you pay for it. Most people prefer to pay, to make the investment, to pay for things after they've gotten some value, or at least an inkling of value, okay? And so what you want to do is recognize that, listen, man, your business has got to be such where somebody, if they interact with you, if they interact with your content, if they interact with your big advice, information, and tools, they're more likely to want to work with you, not less likely, right? If your whole business can be solved by just creating content on the internet, then let's talk about that business. Let's have that be some other sort of reframing of your business, but it's not, okay? People who are watching this video, I'm going through almost everything that I would talk about in person, but they need more. People need help creating the stuff. They need help thinking through the stuff. You don't have to be fearful about sharing content with people, okay? Just share it wisely. I want you to do both, widely and wisely. So the articles lead to bait, okay? That bait could take the form of some sort of guide. It could be an ebook. It could be a white paper. There are certain things. An article has less value than an ebook. An ebook has less value than a diagnostic. A diagnostic and a resource guide have about the same amount of value online. Things that are electronic have less value than things that are physical, okay? Uh, it's important to know what your customers, how they identify value or, or ascribe or attribute value to things. The book, yay book. The book is a, I'll get a book. The book, and this is the worst possible example because you really want a book with your picture and what have you information on. But the book you could see as, hey, this is great. This is my way of gaining celebrity, authority, having pieces to put into my customer or onboarding or my intake and conversion. I can use this for my lead generation. I can uh, partner up with people to distribute it or use it as a way of building credibility um, or relationship with partners. So many good things. Also, people like to have a book, right? And there's no real reason that you, sh that you shouldn't do it. It costs, this book would probably cost two to five dollars to publish. One, one copy of it, okay? Um, it's so easy right now to have a book. It's so easy right now to have a physical book. Having somebody do the graphics, all that stuff, it's so, it's so easy to do, and you've already do, uh, you already uh, are doing it every day. You're talking to your clients every day. You've probably sent thousands of emails with high value information every, uh, th you know, throughout the span of the past year. The real issue is thinking it through, creating your table of contents. This is all stuff that we'll, uh, that you, that we talk about in the handbook and that you can do in the working session, okay? Now, that leads us to my favorite. I, I frankly, I don't care about books. I don't